ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. Israel is in a lot of trouble these days in the Middle East. For all the efforts that she has put forth to try to make peace with the Palestinians, there appears to be no peace and no hope for a future peace. Uh, in chapter 5 of Zechariah, Zechariah turns and sees a flying roll, and he asks about it, and it is told to him, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Finally, he sees a woman being placed into this vehicle and is carried over to Babylon. And he is told in verse 11 um, that she is there to build in a house in the land of Shinar. It shall be established and set there upon her own base. There's something about Iraq and the land of Shinar and the Middle East for this flying Roll, or maybe we should call it a magic carpet. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me all of the ins and outs of the curse of the flying carpet. And J.R., this is a fascinating, fascinating topic because we look with awe upon modern Israel. Uh, a statehood in 1948, we think the Lord's will was done and, uh, uh, and prophecy was fulfilled. Everybody's been very encouraged. Evangelicals are, uh, uh, the world over, are cheering for tiny Israel. And yet, uh, picking up some Jewish newspapers, here's the June 4th Jewish press. The headline, political wrangling continues over Sharon's Gaza plan. The Knesset is all uh, but completely paralyzed by the inability to agree on what to do with Palestinian rule. You look at a typical Jerusalem Post, for example, between hope and despair is one of the articles. A place among the nations with a question mark is another article. Israel is fighting a two-front war, uh, both against the Palestinians and against the leaders of Europe who have turned against Israel. And these are just typical articles. Israel is in desperate trouble. And I think it's tied, J.R., and I think we can make a very good case for the fact that it's tied to, to this curse that's mentioned in Zechariah. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole uh, earth. Now, if you look that word curse up in the Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew lexicon, which is the authoritative Hebrew lexicon, you find a three-letter Hebrew word. Bear with me, this is interesting. Aleph, Lamet, He, three little Hebrew letters, defined as an oath. And if you break this oath, you're going to be under a curse. Defined as an oath of a covenant. You break the covenant, you're going to be under a curse. And number three, it's defined as a curse from God. Aleph, Lamet, He. J.R., I'm holding here a modern Hebrew language dictionary. This is the Bantam Hebrew Megiddo Dictionary that's used all over Israel, all over the world. And I find that little three-letter word, Aleph, Lamed, Hey, in it. I look it up, and guess what it says? Allah. <clears throat> Allah, capital A-L-L-A-H in modern English, defined in the Old Testament as a curse. Over 2,000 years ago, the Hebrew prophets wrote that in the last days, Israel would be under the curse of Allah. It's there in the Hebrew. You can look it up for yourself. This is absolutely incredible, Gary. Yes, it is. This curse of the flying carpet is actually the curse of Islam. And it flies over the whole world. Now, the fascinating thing <clears throat> in the figure of this curse, by the way, is a flying roll, uh, and, and Zechariah saw this flying roll, 20 cubits long, 10 cubits wide. That's huge. That's 35 feet long and 17 and a half feet wide in uh, modern measurement. And if you think of a flying scroll or roll being unrolled and flying along, it looks exactly like what? A flying carpet. And this flying carpet is a, has a rich history in Arabian mythology, right? Absolutely. And, um, oh, in stories like uh, the Arabian Nights mm -hmm. 
in stories like uh, Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, oh, yes. or in uh, Aladdin and his lamp and his magic carpet. Oh yes. And when you get right down to it, it is the curse of Islam. Uh, for the very word Allah here, pictured as a flying carpet of sorts, is called Allah. And that's exactly what we have today. And Gary, not only that, but she goes over to the Euphrates uh, River area to Shinar and is established there upon her own base. Is it possible that the interim government that is being set up, or maybe I should say the Islamic government that is being set up in Iraq, that our government is turning over to the Iraqi people will actually be a rogue government when it's all said and done? Yeah, uh, very likely. You know, Jr. when we look at this curse, and, and I know many of our uh, viewers may be saying, well, this, this sounds a little bit far-fetched to me, so let's go back. Let's take this word curse. Before let's do we, that, yes. Before we completely uh, get, get deeply into Zechariah chapter 5, let's go through the Old Testament and just look at the use of this word curse, which again is Aleph Lamet He, pronounced Allah. You look at, uh, for example, Numbers 521, um, a woman accused of adultery brought before a priest of Israel. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, the Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. That's the word Allah uh, to, uh, that's used to apply to a woman who uh, has committed adultery. And or who is accused of committing adultery. Like accused thereof. And the test that they have, to, um, according to the book of Numbers, the test that they give to her is if she is guilty, then uh, this um, water that she drinks or liquid that she drinks will, begin, will be, become bitter. Right. In other words, uh, her guilt will actually cause her harm. Yeah, and, and J.R., in Numbers uh, 5.27, the, the last clause in 5.27 uh, says that she's found guilty. The woman shall be a curse among her people. In other words, she'll be outcast. And the word curse there, again, is Allah. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't, isn't it? it? Oh, but I like the one in Deuteronomy 29 because this takes us to the last days, to the last generation, doesn't mm. it? Deuteronomy, uh, again, 29, and let's start with verse 12 here. <clears throat> uh, it's speaking of a covenant, uh, this is the parties of the covenant, uh, and Israel is urged to keep this covenant, that thou shouldst enter into the covenant of the Lord thy God into his oath, and that's that word, Allah, which if broken becomes a curse, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee uh, to this day. Skip down to verse uh, 14, neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, which again, if you break the oath, it becomes a curse, Allah. And finally, in uh, verse 19, and, and it shall come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, uh, that he bless himself in his heart. Well, again, that word curse is Allah. Uh, it's an imprecation, it's an oath. If you fail to live up to God's requirement for you, you'll be subject to this curse, and it's spelled Aleph, Lamet, He, or Allah. And that's not the end of this in Deuteronomy, yes, is it? that's right, no. You've got a uh, curse in the next two verses as well. And then in verse 22 it says, So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and this word generation to come is Hador Akron. That's right. Meaning the last generation. And Gary, I think we live there today in the last generation. I think we are seeing the curse. It's spreading across the Middle East and, yea, around the world. Yes. It is Islam. And J.R., we love uh, Israel. We love the Israeli people. We love the idea of the restoration of the Temple Mount. We love the idea of the 12 tribes returning to Israel because that's what God has promised in the kingdom age. We know that the prophecy tells us that we're being prepared uh, for the event of the ages, the regathering of the people. And so we lament when we find them under a curse, but the Bible, J.R., explains why they're under this curse. It's interesting to me that 700 years ago a rabbi wrote that just after the turn of the millennium, that's where we are right now, that the children of Ishmael will bring the whole world to war against Jerusalem to kill the Jews, to eradicate the Jews from the face of the earth. And you know, that speaks to me of Armageddon. So it looks like 
this vast army that is going to come into the Middle East against Jerusalem, against Israel, for the purpose of genocide to destroy every Jew alive will be the curse of Islam. Allah's behind it all, isn't he? Allah, which by the way is a, a perversion or a, shall we say, a variation of Elohim, which is the name of the, of the true God, uh, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And <clears throat> if you simply take the beginning of Elohim uh, and remove it and then uh, spell it Aleph, Lamet, He, pronounced Allah, it becomes a, a perversion of the true name of God and is thus featured in Scripture, no matter where you find it. Mm -hmm. In the wisdom of the Hebrew alphabet, we have the various meanings of the Hebrew letters. And it's interesting to me that Rabbi Monk wrote that uh, they are the components and that there are various ways of using this. And he likened it, for example, to uh, hydrogen and oxygen. If put together in one form, can make water, but if put together in another form, makes hydrogen peroxide. And uh, so I, I would say that there is a negative and a positive use for this Aleph Lamet Hay. Absolutely, Jr. And we must take a break right now. When we come back, we have some very exciting discoveries to share with you. In Psalm 10, that of course is in the first book of the Psalms, the Genesis book. In Psalm 10, the scripture says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. The wicked, verse 3 says, boasteth of his heart's desire. Verse 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Verse 7, his mouth is full of Allah. Oh, what do you think about that, Gary? Well, Jr. Uh, all we can say is that this is in the Hebrew lexicon. We're not making anything up. We just, we're telling it like it is. This is the way it's written in the original Hebrew texts. Allah uh, simply is translated curse in over 30 times in the Old Testament. Uh, I think up to 36 times, if I've counted correctly, don't hold me to that, but, but that's enough to establish uh, the meaning of this word. You go to Psalm uh, 59, J.R., which is uh, a prayer for deliverance from violent men. And it says in verse 12, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride for, and for cursing Allah and lying which they speak. Uh, now, J.R., when, when the, the Jews came back to Israel, there they met Islam head on. It's a head-to-head -head con confrontation with Allah. And we hear it, we read it in the newspapers, it's on the radio, the television. Why shouldn't it be in the Bible? And it certainly appears to be. Yeah. That's, this is an amazing verse here. Yes, it is. Because it talks about their, the sin of their mouth, the words of their lips, their lying, and their cursing of Israel. And, and they say, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. Let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. And their cursing is Allah. Mm. It's amazing. Well, let's go to the next one, Gary. And, and, and J.R., as we move along here, and there are many verses, I don't think we have time to cover them all, but uh, Isaiah 24-6. Uh, <clears throat> Isaiah 24-6 is often referred to as the little apocalypse. That is, the, it, it's the tribulation. It's the judgment of the world. And you have here this statement, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Well, J.R., uh, the word curse in this verse is Allah. What can I say? Yes, God is calling Allah a curse. Yeah. And it goes on to say, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. This is what this, this is the theme of this particular chapter. It goes on to say that Allah has devoured the earth. And uh, of course, uh, this, this is the problem in the Middle East today. And even though our politicians may say that Allah is a good God, that's not what God says. 
he actually calls Allah a curse here. What's the next one, Gary? Well, there are many in Jeremiah. I'm just going to pick out Jeremiah 20, uh, 29, 18. <clears throat> Uh, the, speaking of Israel in diaspora and calling Israel vile figs or rotten figs that cannot be eaten, uh, which is a figure of uh, apostate Israel. And the 18th verse says, And I will persecute them with the sword, with famine, with pestilence, deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations uh, uh, whither I have driven them. And the first word there, curse, where it says, to be a curse, that's, that's the word Allah. Mm. Amazing. It's about as clear as it could possibly be. Yes. Now, you've written an article about this for our next magazine, and uh, it would be good if you could get the article and read all about it. And we encourage you to do so. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter uh, 42. Yeah, Gary. go ahead and read that one. Uh, well, okay. He says here in chapter 42, uh, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, is mine anger and my fury hath been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you, when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an execration, an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. So there he, re he speaks of a curse again and uses the term Allah. And uh, this is often used where Israel uh, makes uh, a, uh, shall we say, an unclean uh, uh, agreement with other nations in violation of the covenant of God. Now, J.R., we are uh, running short on time, so let's come down to the meat of the matter. Uh, let's go back to uh, Zechariah, but before we do, let's talk about uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, and it's been pointed out by, by uh, other students of the Bible that Daniel 9:11 contains this word, Allah. Uh, yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And that word curse, J.R., in Daniel 9, uh, 1, 1, is Allah, which to me combines a lot of features. Now, Daniel chapter 9 has this incredible story of the 70 weeks. And, of course, it concludes with the 70th week in verse 27 when he, whom uh, most theologians agree to be the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That would be the seven-year tribulation period. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And all of this, this curse upon yeah. Israel, is termed Allah. Amazing. It, it, you know, it, it goes back to Jacob and Esau. It goes back to a feud among cousins. And we've talked about that many, many times. It goes back to who owns the land, this long dispute uh, that, that's been raging now for centuries. It goes back to the 6th century, the birth of Islam, uh, which, by the way, says uh, Father Abraham is our father, and his blessings are conferred upon us. Meanwhile, the Jews over here also talk about Father Abraham. And so what we have here is a raging battle which should never have been raging had Israel kept their covenant. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that uh, Islam says that uh, Abraham offered Ishmael instead of Isaac yes. upon the altar and that the angel of the Lord withsta uh, withstood him or mm -hmm. uh, stayed his hand. And also that Abraham and Ishmael went over to Mecca and built this, uh, right. this black uh, edifice uh, that uh, where all of Islam goes to worship today. This is amazing. It's truly amazing. And, and J.R., it's amazing in the fact that uh, the Lord promised to make Ishmael a great nation. And uh, this brings us back now uh, to where we started in Zechariah chapter 5 because we have the curse of the flying roll, which we're calling a flying carpet, if you will. And the angel told Zechariah this is the curse, Allah, that goes all over, the, all over the face of the whole earth. 
It started right there in the Middle East, but indeed, it's gone to the Philippines, Al-Qaeda. It's gone to Hong Kong. It's gone throughout to India, Pakistan, Afghanistan. It's now in the Western Hemisphere. It's in Mexico. It's in the United States. It's covering the whole earth. And the important thing about it all is that Islam or Allah will continue to be the curse until Jesus comes. Now, I think it's coming as soon, but the important thing to see about this is we're not going to be able to solve the problem. America, with its mighty military, will not be able to stop Armageddon. Armageddon is coming regardless. There will be a world government, whether it's Europe or whether it's the um, United Nations, whatever it is, there is coming a world government and an antichrist who will rise upon the scene and Allah will be in the thick of the mix all the way through to the Battle of Armageddon. Don't forget that. And we got ourselves in a mess over in the Middle East, but the only one to solve it is Jesus. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, it's been an interesting program, The Curse of the Flying Carpet. <laughs> or could this be an airplane? Could this be one of the planes that flew into the World Trade Center. Ooh. Could this be a reference to all of the war planes that are creating this problem throughout the earth? This is the curse, said God, and he used the word Allah. And J.R., uh, the flying carpet is indeed uh, a figure right out of Arabian myth. And also, uh, Zechariah chapter 5 ends with the woman flying in the ephah back to the land of Shinar. That's Babylon. That's, that's uh, uh, Iraq. That's where our troops are today. So if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you need to trust him today. He alone can give you eternal life. This is J.R. Church and Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on audio tape, or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on videotape. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.